As I was like starting to like have a real relationship with Jesus and not just like head knowledge, but actually like, getting to know him, um, I would feel called to this um, or feel called like maybe I'm supposed to do something different with my life. But it felt like such a risk. It felt like such a risk of um, Jesus. You know, a lot of people have let me down in my life and I love you and I am trusting you more and I want to trust you even more. I, I want to be a saint. I want to go to heaven. I want to um, bring as many people as possible. But like, you want me to be your spouse too? Like, and I know that that's not just sunshine and flowers all the time. Like, I know right. you want me to be your spouse on the cross. And oh. um, I was like, I don't know, Lord. Um, and like, do, will you be enough for me? And will I be enough for you? Um, so um, just in, as I got older and started to experience his his gaze upon me and upon all of me, not just mm. the parts that I like mm. Mm. or, but like my sinfulness and my brokenness or my weaknesses or yeah, the, my, my, my enfleshed humanity that um, I feel how did limited you, by sometimes. How did you but, do that, sister? How did you let Jesus see you there? I mm -hmm. mean, that's, a, that's an intimate mm -hmm. experience in prayer, I imagine, that mm -hmm. you're describing. Yeah. I mean, like a lot of, a lot of wrestling, I would say, or maybe not even wrestling, just like, just hold on just a second. Resisting? Like it was really slow. A lot of yep. resisting, I would say. Yeah. And I, um, I started to, yeah, just experience, and he was so slow and so, um, so tender and just in, in using phrases, um, or just like, like I would not like audibly hear these, but like experience this in my prayer of, um, no, I, I have chosen you mm. even words like to be chosen or to be seen or to be wanted like it was like he was redeeming my vocabulary too Ooh, because um i didn't feel chosen for a long time and i didn't feel wanted and i felt disposable and i would have rather not be seen mm -hmm. um and yet he's showing me all the opposites of these but in such like a tender and gentle way and so in yeah, after I graduated college and I would, I did, I spent a lot more time in Eucharistic adoration and um, in, in dialoguing with other people about this, about what's going on and um, what, what is Jesus doing? And I think I'm called to religious life, but that feels like the biggest leap ever. And I don't Ooh. know if he's going to catch me, <laughs> but the thing is now it's not even like he's going to catch me. It's like, we left together, you know, Ooh. like here we went July 16th, oh, we jumped. Beautiful. So, um, yeah, so I um, I started, it just like started being stirred up again the more that I would spend time in adoration and the more honest time I spent um, reflecting on his um, healing in my life and his redemption. Because yes, it was about a lot of sad things and difficult things, but like the beauty that that brought and the, like, the release that that gave me, mm, mm. I was like, this is real and this is what I want to live in and also maybe you're calling me to be your spouse um so just it was probably like a five-year five-year journey of really seriously thinking about this um and then yeah being in contact with communities and i would um i was in when i was working my pastor and i we went on missions to africa and which that was another dream i never thought that i would be able to do mm, or like mm. like all these things that I thought like you have to be tall to be a missionary or you have to be able to like build a house or you have to be able to carry big things or um but really you have to be able to love people and to be able to see people and I was like well I can try you can do that yeah, I can do that yeah so so while we were there um in yeah 2014 for the first time I was there in daily mass so it just with the Eucharistic Lord you know with the body of Jesus after communion I was praying outside against this yellow wall with all these Ugandan children, and I'm loving this, and I'm thinking, I could live the rest of my life here as an English teacher or whatever, and Jesus is like, I want so much for you. Mm. I want you, and I want you on purpose. Ooh. Like, I, I felt those words in my heart. And so that was the first time that I really was aware of my call to con it wasn't the first time I was aware of my call to consecrated life, but it's the first time that I wasn't afraid. And I knew that that meant something. I knew that he had given me so much grace and so much mercy to be able to, to receive him in that and to say, and I 
want to do that too, Lord. I want to be with you forever. I want to be yours. Um, and I can't believe that you want to be mine, which he does. You know, you don't have to be a sister for Jesus to want right, to be yours. Right, like right. we talk about that here all the time. Like we're all right. meant to receive and to be a bride, but to be particularly called in that way through the offering of my life, the offering of me that um, because of him, I am enough. And because of him, like that he is enough for me. So um, it was a few years after that still of like discerning with different communities and seeing if he's calling me or where he's calling me or um, yeah, just different like health challenges or limitations or things like, Lord, I don't know about this. Like, are you, is this going to be too much? Like, no, I see you through. I see you through. We are, we're taking the jump together. Uh, so. Thank you.